Hey guys, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Okay, so if you follow me on any other social media platforms, you may have noticed that I have been moving studios. So this is my new home, the new home of Eva Louvre Lingerie, a place where I'm gonna be manufacturing my made-to-order lingerie, develop new patterns, stock loads more lingerie supplies, as well as, very excitingly, um, teaching some workshops for my sewing patterns. So I've been making quite a few big sewing-related purchases recently which has been very exciting but the one thing which I absolutely had to get right was the right sewing machine. So I came up with a bit of a checklist and I ended up with the Faf Passport so I've got a 2.0 here and the ones I'll be using mostly in my sewing classes is the Faf Passport 3.0 which is like the next one along in the series. So I'm going to go through my checklist which may help you if you are thinking of purchasing a new sewing machine and you're putting together a bit of a checklist or if you just want more information about the FAF Passport. So I hope this video will benefit somebody out there, that's the reason why I'm doing it, just to share some information. Okay, so the main difference is as far as I understand between the two different in the series. I'm going to kind of talk about them as if they're the same machine through my checklist because they do the same things. But there is a couple of differences between the different models. So obviously the main difference is you can sort of see this has the dark black or dark navy grey black front and the 3.0 is white. That's the most immediate obvious difference. The second difference as far as I can see the 3.0 actually has an additional 30 decorative stitches than the 2.0. So if you are someone that loves a decorative stitch, this machine has a ton of them. So the last remaining difference as far as I can see is that this machine actually at the end of a seam you can hit the button with the little scissor icon on it and it just cuts the threads for you don't have to trim them uh, it doesn't leave any sort of long tails or anything it's a really cool feature which I've never experienced on any other sewing machine so there you go I think those are the only differences between the two machines so the first and probably one of the most important things is that obviously this is going to be quite a multifunctional space so I'm going to be manufacturing my made to order stuff here in the weeks and then hopefully in the evenings and the weekends have sewing classes here. So it's going to be quite a different setup obviously when I'm here on my own and when I'm running a class all the machines are going to be out around the table I have it opposite me now and rather than just like just one of each machine being set up on this table where I can just work between. So I need to move them around, they've got to be light and easy to move which is how I ended up initially looking at the passports. Obviously these machines are designed for moving around and traveling with so that was a huge sort of tick box. They are light. They um, are they actually come with a hard case which I know you can buy um, cases for sewing machines but these come with a hard case as you know all included with the price of them so that is just a great big thumbs up. I can just whack the covers over when they're not being used put them under the table, on the shelves, in these nice hard cases, and they're not going to get damaged. So that was a major thing I was looking for, and something these sewing machines are just perfect for. So they are also really quiet machines. This was something that was quite high up on the priority of, you know, must-have lists. If I've got six, potentially six sewing machines going off at once, maybe a couple of overlockers as well, it's going to get really noisy in here if I didn't pick the right machine. So obviously these machines had to do the right stitches, but you don't need any fancy stitches for lingerie, so this was more of a, a double check after I'd made my decision, but you just need a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, and a three-step zigzag stitch, or a like multi-step zigzag stitch. These machines have them, so absolutely no problems there. Something else I thought would be beneficial to um, like a workshop is the fact that these machines are digital, so you can just say set your stitch width to this and your length to this, and you can just do it and it's the same every time. You haven't got to kind of guess moving a little thing around that's got four here and one here and you kind of guess where you put it. So I think it just makes it really accurate and just takes any, any kind of potential user error out of the equation. This is also something I found really beneficial, like if I'm sewing a certain type of elastic or a certain width of elastic, I know exactly what stitch settings I want to put it on and it just makes it super quick and super easy and the same every time. So something else that was quite high up on the priority list was having an adjustable speed on the sewing machine. Both these machines have this and so does my previous machine and I've talked 
um, a few beginner, absolute beginner sewers, like never been on a sewing machine before. And the biggest thing that kind of puts people off is putting the foot on the pedal and it's just gonna go way too fast and out of control and make a mess and sew over your fingers and oh, it's gonna be awful. But I found that if you put your sewing machine on the slowest setting, you can put your foot literally to the floor and it's just gonna sew just a really slow stitch. And it's, it, it's just, I think it's a confidence thing, especially when you first start to sew. I definitely would have appreciated that when I first started to learn to sew. So it's something I think will definitely be useful in sewing classes. Another thing along the same kind of lines, which I didn't even know existed, so it wasn't on my checklist, but it's something that I've since discovered since using these machines and I think is really beneficial, again, to maybe beginner sewers, is that if the presser foot is raised and you try and sew, like you put your foot on the pedal, it, it won't go and it'll just beep because the presser foot is raised. This is something that, again, with beginner sewers on my previous machine, you could physically sew with the foot raised, except for obviously you don't want to do that and I'm there going, no, no, stop. Um, but with these machines, it's not even possible. So again, another little useful feature with the FAF passports. And of course, we can't talk about FAF passports without talking about the integrated dual feed system, which basically means the fabric is bought through. If you've got layers, it all kind of comes through the machine. It's fed evenly from the top and the bottom. So if you are sewing a lot of patchwork and you've got a lot of layers, it's gonna bring the layers through at the same time. It's not all gonna get separated. If you're sewing with delicate fabrics, then it stops it puckering. It basically just means you get a really neat seam no slipping, sliding, or puckering. So this is a great little feature that both these machines have. So those are the main points on my checklist. Everything that I thought of these machines really ticked them off. They are light, easy to move, hard case, got all the correct stitches, different um, sewing speeds. You can adjust the stitch widths and lengths really easily. And there's a couple of extra things as well that, you know, um, that isn't going to particularly benefit me, but things like you can obviously take the feed dogs down, you can do freehand embroidery, there's like a needle threader, loads of really, really good stuff. Obviously you can adjust all the tension, that's quite a standard thing with sewing machines. So yeah, it's just they are fantastic machines. And I would just like to mention, I've just been raving about these machines. I'm not, obviously, I'm not being paid to say any of this. This isn't a sponsored video at all. And I try to think of um, a couple of negative things for this sewing machine. And the only thing I could really come up with was that I, I have found this, I know other blog posts I've read, it has, it's kind of said almost the opposite of this, but with these machines I found that you have to use the correct needles. With my previous sewing machines, you can pretty much get away with any needle, like a universal needle or sew swimwear, like a, a, my twin needle. I've, I've used a universal twin needle on my last sewing machine and it sewed absolutely perfectly. However, I've had to get specific stretch needles um, especially like the twin needles, it just didn't sew a single stitch until I got the correct needle. So, I mean, it's the right needle, it's the one you should use, so it's not a fault with the machine, all the machines at all, but it's just something that I've noticed. So if you're sewing with stretch, get stretch needles for them. But that's the only thing I can think of that's remotely negative, it's not even a negative really. So I hope this video has been of benefit to any somebody out there if you're watching this video kind of in the next few months and you are interested in doing a workshop at my new studio then head over to my website and check it out but if not thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye